Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here to give you a review of another field monitor. This is from the company Desview, and it's their S5 model. This is a 5.5 inch field monitor, and um, I'm going to do my best, because we are kind of spoiled for choice in the day in which we live, there are so many of these type products out there. I'm gonna to try to delineate quickly here today what I think you know, sets us apart, and so that you can you know, make your choice considering some of the, the pros and the cons that come as a part of it. So as mentioned, this is a 5.5 inch field monitor. And there's kind of five inch, five and a half inch, and then seven inch are the most common uh, sizes. Uh, what, some of the things that sets us apart is it's really designed to be a really lightweight model. It comes in at 153 grams, which is you know about 35% lighter than a lot of alternatives, at least according to their marketing. I can attest to the fact that it is really nice and lightweight. Part of that is because they have a really slim bezel to this, and so it's a 5.5 inch screen, but it's almost all screen. And so they have got, you know, Good materials on here that are very resistant to scratching, and um, it's they call it it's it's a 4.5 millimeter micro bezel design, and so um, and it has that you know OCR full fit, and so it's um, you know it's nicely resistant to scratching. What it's not resistant to is fingerprints, however. Um, it's not a touch screen, but just in the, the process of handling it, I find that it's quite prone to picking up fingerprints, and so you know just be aware of that. But it is very nice that it's, it's compact and so it doesn't take up a lot of room. All the other materials outside of the screen are all, so all around either on the sides or the back, they're all a really nice uh, soft touch material. And so uh, they feel really good. A very clean back, um, back design to where it just has these various slots in it for heat dissipation. And then, of course, obviously the slot for taking in a battery. Now, um, it doesn't come with a battery, and so you know people often ask, well, what's how long does the screen last? That's really an impossible question to ask or to answer, I should say, because it really depends on the size of the battery that you put in. So I've got, I like to typically use in these, I use a slimmer battery. And so it just kind of, you know, particularly for using it on a gimbal, it helps with the balance of it. And so, I mean, obviously you can go into a lot of different sizes, but they're basically using the, you know, the Sony type F series batteries. You know, this, this is an F750 here and the one that's in it at the moment. It is a NPF 550 um, or 570. And so I've got a 3000 um, mAh battery pack in there right now. And so with that one, I'll probably get about an hour and a half of, of play time. You know, with something like this, the battery life obviously will go quite a bit up, you know, because it's 50% it's larger in terms of capacity. But keeping a smaller battery pack also obviously in the combined with the lightweight of the monitor itself means that it's easy to mount on a gimbal or it could mount it out on that, you know, I have the handle assembly for this. This is a Moza Air um, gimbal. So you can mount it out on that. And so being lightweight is obviously useful. It's gonna help you with balancing with all of those things. And so that's certainly a positive. Now along the top, there are five different buttons that are, again are all in that kind of soft touch material. And um, the center button is the one that you access the menu for. So let's explore that for a second. On the plus side, the menu is full, full of features. I mean, you have all the different, um, you know, assistants. You can go to single color, false color, peaking. You can control the peaking color. You can have zebras, histogram, audio meters, um, camera mode. You can control all of those different uh, functionalities there as a part of it. And then on below that, there are, there are more menus. There's a guide menu, so you can have crosshair, safety guides, aspect guides, guide color, guide mask you know, down into video configuration and color setting and function setup and system configuration. I'm making a point here that there are a ton of different menu options, which is great, but much like a lot of Sony cameras, the downside of that is that a very complex menu system and sometimes this functions that you want to just use all the time, you know, like many, if you're like many users, there might be a handful of those actual functions that you use on a regular basis. And so um, it can be, they can kind of get buried. And so I would certainly recommend that, you know, like Sony, that maybe um, Deskview add a My Menu kind of option where you can map commonly used settings to a more simplified menu structure 
or as some others do to actually map them to some other buttons. In this case, that would be difficult to do because there are no additional custom buttons to be programmed. But uh, so, I, you know, I, it's kind of a pro and a con when it comes to the menu. It's, it's got a, a, you know, a logical menu with lots of options, but maybe too many options um, it would be easier to have some of those options that were you know, commonly used and easily accessed. Um, as far as the actual resolution here, you have a 1080p um, native resolution, but it is 4K compatible as basically all of these are. And so, um, you know, and as far as in some of the basic settings, its brightness is 450 nits, essentially. Um, it, go, it adopts the uh, REC 709 color calibration standard. And so it will display, you know, with that calibration, about 95% of the NTSC color space. Um, as far as the actual picture quality, the picture quality is, is nice and clean. It looks good. Um, I, I do find that the brightness is good enough that I can use it outside, but obviously if you're going to use it outside, it is wise to use the, the, the shade there as a part of it. Now I did note in their marketing video from Deskview that they, you know, they talk about the fact that the, the shade is collapsible, which is true. <laughs> However, you need to have this bracket attached um, for you to actually mount that shade. And it is not uh, collapsible, obviously. And not that it's a huge deal to have it attached, other than the fact that it makes the actual monitor about twice as thick. And it doesn't fit any longer like into the hard case. Um, and it does, it is set apart. I've never seen one of these come with kind of a Pelican style uh, hard case. And so that, that is cool that it's included. And you can see inside it's got a um, padded foam interior. And so it's really nice for actually putting just the monitor in there. But one thing that I will criticize here is that while I love having the hard case option, great protection value, you even have to disassemble and take off the L bracket. And so it's basically just the monitor itself and you might be able to squeeze in one of the cables, but that's basically all that's going to fit. Fortunately, it does also come with this pouch here, kind of a felt pouch. And um, it's big enough that you can fit basically everything that you want into there. So unfortunately, I've ended up using this, even though it's generic compared to this. It's just more functional. And so anyway, um, recognize that. Now, something that I really, really love here, it might seem like a small thing, but it's actually not. The included cables are really fantastic. They're, com they're highly, highly flexible, um, kind of a, a rubberized cable, but it's really, really flexible. And um, it, the length is about appropriate for if you're mounting it either on camera or on a gimbal. And so what I have found that sometimes the included cables um, on other field monitors, they're so stiff that if you're mounting it on, for example, a, um, a gimbal and you have it off on the handle, it can, those cables can be so stiff that they can actually impede the movement of your, your camera a little bit, um, you know, because obviously you're still attaching into the camera. And so I really, really love the fact that these cables are, are so fantastic. It's actually got three different cables that are included. You've got a mini HDMI to, you know, full HDMI. You've got a micro HDMI, like for Sony cameras. And then there's USB-C to um, full HDMI that's there as well. Now, one of the thing that it does have, you can obviously, it has an option for a DC input if you want to just control it with a, you know, another power source, but it also has a DC out and it's kind of set up in a, with a D tap in. And so what that can allow you to do is to actually power a camera in some situations, depending upon obviously the camera that you're using, but you could uh, potentially power your camera off that. And so if you had a larger battery pack, it might extend your filming time and uh, give you a, a nice option when it comes to that. One thing that I will just kind of also highlight uh, that I wouldn't mind seeing as a feature for the future for things like this is that if you flip the, uh, the monitor over, which, you know, if you're wanting to front monitor like that, you certainly might do. But when you do that, you have to go through menu settings um, and you have to access the menu settings upside down initially. And you have to go through the menu settings to get that screen to invert. Um, and so it's, you know, in the proper perspective. I think it would be great, not just for this monitor, but for others, if they could include something like an internal gyroscope that would recognize when you're doing that and thus automatically do that. It would just, you know, save some time, just kind of a practical function, maybe a recommendation for the future. 
I will note that also on this along the bottom, you've got both a headphone monitoring jack and a micro USB port that you can use to um, update it. Do you do firmware updates in the future? Um, the L bracket itself is nicely made. I really do like uh, the tightening knob. It's, it just feels more quality than what a lot of them are. It's, it's kind of uh, feels like a, a lightweight aluminum, but it's got a nice grip on it that feels like you know the wheels on your camera. And um, it just allows you to get a nice firm connection when it comes to that. So at the end of the day, bottom line, the price for the Desview S5 is 169 US dollars, which makes it, you know, a competitively priced, you know, kind of within the window that a lot of these come. It's got some good functions, a good sleek design to it. A few drawbacks, as I've tried to highlight, as do uh, most of them. And so hopefully this can help you in terms of making your decision if this is something that you might look for. So if you're looking for really lightweight and compact, this is a great option for you. And uh, again, one of my favorite things is actually the included cables, which are really, really cool. I'm Dustin Abbott. If you look in the description down below, uh, you can find purchase links there if you'd like to go and shop for one for yourself. There are also the typical links to follow me on social media, including now on Instagram. You can sign up to become a patron and get sneak previews to upcoming content every week. And uh, beyond that, of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.